it's it's almost like it's it's you can literally there's no boundaries there's nothing like 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 there's no boundaries and i mean i think as far as hardcore goes like like the hardcore that you and i i guess on this would be on the same page going yeah that's hardcore Right. There really is no like like I'm just saying like and this is not not a slag or anything but like for a band like Turnstile like I don't know those guys but I imagine you probably couldn't get them with the accessibility that like dude you can email Ian McCock and you can get right. and he's going to email you back. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so crazy that there's literally only a few degrees of separation from me to fucking, you know, Porcel or whoever, you know right. what I mean? Just because of the connections you make through hardcore, whether it's playing in bands, being a fan, doing shows, starting a label, doing a zine, whatever, you know, however you choose to play your part in it and give back, it's uh it's really, you know, fucking so amazing. And I know that's like probably cheesy to a lot of people, but that's one of the things I love about it is that I have this connection with these people just by playing uh, quote unquote, you know, shitty music. So, so then what comes after Aftermath of a Train? So, Aftermath, uh, let's see, we were playing, we broke up. Uh, so, that was like 2001 or two to like 2007, I want to say. Mm. 2007, we broke up, and I was already singing in another band called uh, Cool Your Jets. And that was, um, just this really melodic, fast, uh, straight edge band that, uh, we were on seven dagger and, uh, they were with a couple of the younger kids who, um, I really got along with and loved hanging out with. And they were just a bunch of fucking sweetheart kids. Um, nothing like the older kids. They weren't, they weren't like looking for fights. They weren't, you know, fucking assholes like we all were. So it was, uh, it was a nice change of pace. You know what I mean? Um, I ruined that band um, because I'm an asshole, to be honest. Um, and uh, we did a lot of fun shit. We toured with a band called Broadway Calls, and um, which had dudes from uh, Countdown to Life. So, uh, you know, connection back to New Age. And um, they, it was really fun. Um, I don't think those guys had as much fun as I did. But... Um, so we did that for a couple of years and then uh, it kind of fizzled out. Um, they all quit. They started other bands. Um, our bass player, Sam, went to, uh, he played in, um, uh, what's the fucking, uh, why is on the tip of my tongue? Jeez. Cult leader. There we go. Cult leader. And so he, uh, he had massive success with, uh, with Anthony, uh, the singer of Cult leader, played in my very, very first band that we never played any shows. Um, he, uh, those guys did great and phenomenal success and it was awesome. I mean, I don't even know if they've done shit since COVID, but I mean, they were opening for Deftones and shit on tour, doing a lot of awesome shit. Um, and then the other kids, uh, you know, played in this band called Reviver and they were really, really good. And uh, Matt uh, is still playing um, back home in Salt Lake with a bunch of kids. Uh, doing a bunch of different bands. They're just really creating all the time. So, um, but yeah, uh, clear cool jets. And then, uh, that ended up stopping and yeah, just kind of, I, I was playing in a couple bands here and there, but nothing crazy. Just, uh, yeah, I don't really know. It, it, it was a lot of, it was, I played in a lot of weird bands that didn't do anything, but it was really fun. <laughs> 